ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا رب العالمين thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for praising as the wajal for his blessings we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and to make us of those who are granted beneficial knowledge and they work with it to please him subhanahu wa ta'ala allahumma amin we come back to the explanation of the book important matters important lessons for every muslim and we reach in the seventh lesson regarding the pillars of the salah pillars of salah and we said that there are how many 14 pillars of the salah very important and the pillar is the the thing that the structure is built upon meaning that if any of those pillars are not there are invalid that the salah is going to be considered invalid so it cannot be made up with or fixed with the sajda of forgetfulness sajda to settle as to you have to come up with a pillar again and we talked about three of these pillars. We're going to complete the rest, inshallah, ta'ala. And the first pillar was standing up with the ability to do so. Standing up, al-qiyam, with the ability to do so. And number two is the takbiratul ihram. Takbiratul ihram of the of the, first, the beginning of the takbir, uh, of the first takbir that we say. And number three we talked about was the recitation of Surat al-Fatiha. And that is for the imam and the ma'mum. The imam, if you are praying as an imam, or you're praying as an individual by yourself, or you are praying as a uh, jama'ah, and uh, you're following an imam, you have to recite so the pattern. The fourth pillar is a ruku'ah. The fourth pillar is what? A ruku'ah, bowing. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu rka'u wa astudu wa abudu rabbakum. Or you believe, bow down and prostrate them yourselves. And Allah says, So these are evidences and bow with those who bow. Surah Al-Baqarah. So Ruku'ah, according to the uh, this evidence from the Quran, is a pillar of the Salah. And the, the Salah is not correct without it. In the hadith of the man who prayed badly, hadith al rajul الذي the Prophet said to him, and then bow, then remain in this state of ruku' until you feel at rest in the bowing. And as we know, to complete the ruku', we have to uh, be in the position that even like water or a cup of water is in your back, cannot doesn't fall down, meaning that the, the, the back is straight. It's not up and it's not, it's not too much down it has to be straight and you're looking at the place of the sujood obviously for the person who can do so if the person he can't has problem with his back Allah, Allah does does not burden a person more than he can bear so that's the the bowing the fifth and the six pillars they come together fifth and the six pillars of the salah it is rising from a rukur you're in the position of rukur Rising from a ruku'ah and the six it is standing straight after rising from a ruku'ah. This is to rise from the ruku'ah until you are standing straight and each joint in the spine returns to its position. Each joint on the spine returns to its position, all the bones. Unfortunately, some of the people rise from the ruku'ah, and that it happens many times. Some of the people rise from the ruku'ah and then fall into sujood before standing straight fully erecting their bodies. And whoever does so, he has no prayer. Why? Because he has left one pillar, which is standing straight. He has left out one of the pillars. This person actually has stolen from his salah, has stolen from his prayer, and this is the worst thief. I'm not saying that. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he said, أَسْوَأُ السَّرِقَةِ الَّذِي يَسْرِقُ صَلَاةً and the worst of the thieves, Prophet said, 
The worst of the thieves is the one who steals from his prayer. They said to him, how does the person steal from his prayer, Rasulullah, Messenger of Allah? He replied, he does not complete ruku' or sujood. It's like you're stealing from your prayer, meaning that you're stealing the hasanat. You don't make it uh, complete. This is a type of, of thief, and it is worse than stealing money because wealth is connected to the rights of the people while the prayer is connected to the rights of Allah, the rights and of Allah are greater. You understand why is the worst of the thieves? Because he is stealing from the right of Allah, which is to pray salah properly. So six and seven. And uh, before uh, that, when you're going, so in, in, in that case, so uh, you have to go slowly in the, when you raise from a rukua or rise from a rukua, you have to go slowly in that position. As we said, that every single bone goes to it and straight, standing straight goes to its proper place. Number seven is a sujood, prostration. And prostration has to be done with seven limbs. Seven limbs or seven bones of the Prophet mentioned. Allah Azawajal said, Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu ko sujudu irka'u wa sujudu wa'abudu rabbakum af'alu al-khayra la'alakum tuflihun. The same ayah that we mentioned for the ruku'ah. Or you will believe, bow down and prostrate yourselves and worship your Lord and do good that you may be successful. This is what? Wajib. This is a command. Amr. In Arabic language, they say, هذا أمر والأمر للوجوب. Now, this is a commandment. And normally, the command is considered an obligation unless there is a, uh, some other evidence which takes it from obligation to become a recommend or something. So this is an obligation. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, أمرت أن أسجد على سبعة أعظم على الجبهة وأشار بيده على أنفه واليدين والركبتين وأطراف القدمين. I have been ordered. So another uh, commandment or the from the Prophet ﷺ is saying, I have been ordered to prostrate on seven bones, on the forehead along with the tip of the nose. And the Prophet ﷺ pointed towards his nose, both hands, both knees, and the toes of the feet. A mistake that a lot of problems, a lot of people they do it is that they forget the nose, the tip of the nose. They they just put on the on the jebha on the forehead and they lift the nose from there. Mistakenly for, for forgetting or sin. But this is what is one part of the of the sajda that you should do it. And it's a must to place those uh, these limbs on the ground. So all of that, this these parts of the body has its portion from the sajjul, subhanallah. Every Every of the, one of those limbs should take the portion of the sujood from the sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if not, the sujood is not considered correct. And you find some people from the beginning of, of the to the, or, or sujood to the end of the sujood, it's going to take a couple of seconds, well, one minute the, the, the most. They keep scratching one foot with the other foot, or they keep maybe putting the one foot on, on top of the other foot. This person, if for the whole time of the sajda, he has done so, then he has not completed the sujood. Basically, this pillar is not there, so he has to bring another sajda. So he has to repeat the, that sajda. He has missed it because he did, did not prostrate on seven limbs. That's mostly that. The, the, the problem is with the nose. Many people, they forget the nose. And second, the feet. They just keep maybe together. And as we know, the feet should be together with the toes on the ground, both together. That's a, a son of the Prophet Sallallahu And not put one on top of the other one, scratching and playing with the feet. Uh, or some people, actually, they might just keep them up from the ground, the, the toes. That's how some sometimes happens. So pay attention to that. Do not miss your sujood and, and uh, up that your salah. The eighth pillar is rising from the sujood. This is a, uh, another pillar, rising from the sujood. This is due to the statement of the Prophet وسلم, to the man who prayed badly. And after the sajda, then rise from it, from the sajda, until you are at ease sitting in between the two sajdas. This is proof that it's mandatory because it comes in the context of the other pillars. So, then you rise from it until you are at ease in the city. So, that's the eight. Number eight, nine. The nine pillar is sitting between the two prostrations. So, rising from the sajda is one pillar. And sitting between the two prostrations, two sajdas, is another pillar. This is the pillar of a prayer. 
When you rise from the first to Jude, you sit. The least amount of time you should sit for is enough time to be at ease. Yeah, and that should be at, at ease. It's just a couple of seconds sitting that between the two sejdas. Whoever goes into second sejda without sitting has left off a pillar of his prayer. As the Prophet ﷺ told the person who prayed badly, then rise from it until you are at ease sitting. And it can be said that this command contains repetition. As if we understand from the Arabic language. Because he mentioned rising from the sujood and sitting between the two sejdas, so it is sufficient to mention one of the frustrations, especially since he did not say, Salaam, rise from the two sejdas, rise from the two bounds. And it is a must to sit between the two sejdas to separate between them. But the sitting is more than just a separation. Sitting is just is not only just separation, but to sit uh, and to stay with calmness. The person must rise from a prostration, from a sajda, and sit between the two prostrations while knowing that it's an independent pillar of the prayer. So we have two pillars here. Rising from a sajda and sitting between the two sajdas is another pillar. We are to the 10th pillar. The 10th pillar is being at ease in each of these movements. All the movements of the salah is a pillar to have the tranquility. Not praying as the Prophet mentioned as a pecking rooster or the sajda, for example. But anyway, you have to be at ease in all of these movements. Where, where is the delil evidence for that? Because the Prophet وسلم, repeatedly, he told the man who prayed badly to be at ease during the movements. Ease, stand straight, uh, stand straight, standing upright, ease, 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 all this comfort. He told him to be at ease in Rukur and one rising from it in sujood and one rising from it. Then he said to him, Then do the same throughout your entire prayer. So being at ease in throughout your entire prayer is a pillar in the Salat. So it's, it's a must during the Salat. The pillar number 11, it's performing all the pillars in order. You cannot just switch the order. Performing the pillars in order. The pillars must be prayed in order, just as they are mentioned in the order of the hadith of the, of the person, the man who prayed badly. For each pillar, the Prophet would, would say what? Then do this. Then do that. So the word what? Then. Which means there is a sequential order. So it must be performed, these pillars, in order. And the prayer cannot be performed out of the order. Prophet he said, Pray as you have seen me pray. If a person forgetfully make sajda before ruku'ah. It's an obligation for him to perform ruku again. Then make sujood. And the sujood done due to forgetfulness is not counted as a replacement. Why? Because as I said in the beginning, if the pillar, you miss a pillar, you can't just make the sajda to sahu at the end. You have to bring that pillar that you missed it, that you took it out of the salah. So here, if the person he switched sujood and ruku, so he did the sujood first and then ruku. Uh, he is to, has to, supposed to do the ruku first and then the sajda. The twelve and the thirteen pillars, which are the final tashahud, meaning the recitation of the final tashahud, and the sitting to recite it. So sitting is one pillar, and the recitation of the tashahud is another pillar. The Prophet وسلم, he said, فَإِذَا قَعَدَ أَحَدُكُمْ فِي الصَّلَاةِ فَلْيَقُلْ التَّحِيَّاتُ لِلَّهِ Shortly, the tahiyya the, the, or the, the tashahud. When one of you sits in the prayer, let him say, التَّحِيَّاتُ لِلَّهِ All compliments, prayers, and pure words are due to Allah. Those are the beginning of the words of the tahiyyat or the, the tashahud. So sitting for the final tashahud and reciting it are pillars, both pillars for the salah. As for sitting and reciting the first tashahud, it is not a pillar. It's not from the pillar. Actually, is what is from the wajibat, obligations of the prayer that is going to be next topic for us. If the person forgets it, which one? The first tashahud. And stands for the third rakah, he must perform two sajda forgetfulness. Sajda to sahu at the end of the prayer 
uh, but does not make the prayer invalid for the first Hashem. The 14th pillar, which is the last, what is left? The Salam or Taslim. And as we said, Taslim, the right side, that's the pillar. On the left side, it's Sunnah. It's not, it's not the pillar for, for that. So this is based on the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Tahrimuha takbiru wa tahliluha taslim. Its opening, the opening of the salah, is to say the takbir, and its closing is to say the taslim. Its closing is to say the taslim or the salah. So these are the pillars of the salah. We're going to move over the obligations, inshallah, and the wajibat, there because they're not too long. And we, we so we can continue, we finish the whole, inshallah, the salah. The obligations or the wajibat, as salah. Wajibat al salah. And there are how many? Eight. Wajibat al salah. And this is actually the eighth lesson. The obligations of prayer are eight. Number one, all the other takbirat that we say, takbirat al intiqal, uh, other than the opening takbir, these are considered from the wajibat al salah or obligatory deeds in salah. Number two, saying, Sami Allahu liman hamidah. Allah hears those who praise him by the imam and those behind him, not only by the imam. Some people that just say are the imam. That's the most correct opinion. Number three, saying, Rabbana wa laik alham, our Lord, to you be the praise. This is for everyone to say, the imam, the ma'mum, everybody. Number four, saying, Subhana Rabbi al azim once at least, that's wajib. Three is a sunnah, but one, glory to be, uh, be to my Lord, the Almighty. One, in Rakua. Saying, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, glory be to my Lord, the Most High, when you do the sujood. Number six, saying, Rabbi Firli, my Lord, forgive me between the two sajdas. Number seven, saying the first tashahud. And number eight, sitting for the first tashahud. So these are how many? Eight wajibat, eight oblig obligatory deeds in salah. We're going to go over that and what you need to do. The Shaykh, Rahmatullah, he said, the eighth lesson is the obligations of the prayer. The wajibat salah the obligations of the prayer, are the actions and statements which are obligatory and mandatory during the prayer, but which are less than the pillars, which are less than the pillar, meaning that if you if you for, forget those, or oh, your salah is still bad. Therefore, whoever forgets an obligation must perform what? Two sajda to sahu, two prostration of forgetfulness at the end of his prayer, and his prayer is invalid if he leaves the, an obligation on purpose. If you leave a wajib on purpose, not forgetfully, if you leave on purpose, that's the salah is not valid. For example, you didn't say Sami Allahu liman hamida on purpose. You know that it is a wajib and you don't say it even once, even one, uh, then your salah is not valid. You have to bring it that back again. So the first wajib, what was the first wajib? Takbirat, all the takbirat, other than the opening takbir. The first takbir, as I said, is a, is a pillar, while the other takbirat, such as the khus, the druid, the rising from those, are from the obligation. Ibn Masood, radiallahu ta'ala, he said, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يُكَبِّرُ فِي كُلِّ خَفْطٍ وَرَفْعٍ The Prophet ﷺ used to say the takbir every time he went down and came up. So he used to say the takbir every time he went down and came up, صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ So, <clears throat> Uh, that's the that that's the sunnah. I, this is for saying it, like raising the hands. This is di different. It's a sunnah. It's not wajib for for that. It's not from wajibat. But the saying is a sunnah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi regarding raising the hands, he used to raise the hands in the beginning, the first takbirah, and then uh, and uh, said that the semi Allahu liman hamida, and then when uh, going in the sujood, then when he coming back for the third rakah, he used to say it. And uh, that's uh, that's normal. The prophet used to do. Sometimes he used to do it even for the second one, which is uh, when you come back from the uh, first raka from the sajda, you finish, you go for the second. And sometimes even between two uh, sajdas, he used to sometimes raise his hands at Allah wasallam. So sometimes, not always, but mainly these are the the, the the first, as I mentioned first. Or that he used to raise his hands. That's different from the but the takbirat he used to say. And a very important thing is that you you should start saying the takbirat or intiqal from the very first moment that you are leaving that rukan or that pillar that thing. For example, you don't say it 
you are in sajda and uh and say, then when you go back from or you rise from a sajda and then you say allah akbar or just reaching the position of sitting between sajda. you should start from the very uh moment that you are leaving the sajda or the very moment that you should say salami allah liman hamida from the beginning of leaving the position of rukua not salami allah liman hamida and you say it while you're strand, uh, straightening your your back and you're standing up because that is a different position and has different words to say and that's very important especially for semi allah liman hamida a lot of people even the imams they they say it while they are in the position of standing up especially because of the microphone you should start the very first moment that you are leaving the rukua then we start obviously it's going to take time you not, you cannot say it in one second semi allah liman hamida but the position you don't say it because you want to reach the mic here and you say hey, you wait all of this time and then you're all where you're almost standing up then you say semi allah liman hamida no you should start from the very first moment you're leaving that rukan or the pillar be that imam or ma'mum whoever you you are praying so make pay attention to to that uh these words the second and the third obligation is here like saying semi allah liman hamida allah hears those who praise him by the imam and those behind him and rabbana wa lak alhamd our lord to you be praised by everyone the imam those behind him and the individual the imams say semi allah liman hamida and those praying behind him and the individual when rising from rukua say la semi allah liman hamida obviously you don't raise your, your voice like the imam and all of them the imam those behind him individual they say rabbana wa lak alhamd after rising from rukua it comes in a hadith of Abu Hurairah in which he described the Prophet ﷺ prayer that he used to say semi Allahu liman hamida when he lifted his back from Rukwa. Yani while, while he was lifting that. It also came in a hadith of Abu Hurairah then he وسلم, would, say, would uh, then say Rabbana wa lak alhamd. And some narrations Allahumma Rabbana wa lak alhamd. And some narrations Rabbana lak alhamd. Without the wow. And some narrations, there is more than that. So it's good actually to memorize many of these du'as uh, in order for you to ponder more upon it. And what's the meaning here? Allahumma rabbana wa lak alhamd, our Lord, our, uh, our Allah, our Lord, and you, to you be the praise. Or we say, semi Allahu liman hamid. We know that Allah hears. And that's the meaning when you translate. The meaning is that Allah hears those who praise him. Uh, but the meaning in here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears Meaning, he hears and answers the prayer of the, his slave, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, he hears and answers, and it means to answer. He hears to answer. Number four and five obligations of the salah, we said, are what? The words, subhana rabbi al azim glory be to my Lord, the Almighty, while you are going, the rukua, and saying, subhana rabbi al ala glory be to my Lord, the Most High, once, at least once, while you're making the sajda. Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, كَانَ يَقُولُ صلى الله عليه وسلم فِي رُكُوعِهِ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّيَ الْعَظِيمِ وَفِي سُجُودِهِ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّيَ الْأَعْلَى He used to say in his ruku' glory be to my Lord the Almighty, and his sujood, glory be to my Lord the Most High. And subhanAllah, that is amazing why Allah Azulam chose these words to be said. He has so many beautiful names, Allah Azza wa Jal, but he chose uh, uh, some of these beautiful names like the Most High, when you are, you are and the, the position when you're putting your highest spot and your spot when you have the honor and you don't want to bow it uh, or to make put that down to anybody else except to the one who is the highest, the honor, who are the exalted. That's where you put your highest point in the ground and you say, glory be to my Lord, the most high. And in Rukur, the same thing, you're, you're bowing to Allah Azza wa Jal, Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. Because he is the greatest, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet used to say, said, As for the bowing, glorify your Lord in this position. As we know, you are not allowed to recite Quran in Rukua. You are not allowed to recite Quran in Rukua, but you have you are supposed to, and even such that too, you are supposed to uh, make ta'zim and uh, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that's why you have plenty of du'as of the Prophet وسلم, which are narrated many authentic hadith. So try to memorize uh, many of them and don't stay with one ruku'ah and then one uh, dua all of your life. Just, don't stay with one surah one of your life. Don't stay with... Uh, memorize more because it's like subhanAllah, the, the same thing. If you eat the same food every night, even be that best of the food, 
uh, you get bored. We're not saying get bored of the words of Allah, but try to make your 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 salah and uh, more to to your heart. And it really you focus in that because you know sometimes you do this dua, sometimes the other one, and you especially when you don't know the meanings. Uh, so another time the Prophet used to do this dua: Subhana dil jabaruti wal malakuti wal kibriya wal adam. Subhana dil jabarut wal malakut wal kibriya wal adam. Glory be to the one who has all power, sovereignty, magnificence, and might. Subhanahu wa taala. It has been authenticated from the Prophet ﷺ that he used to say this in Rukua and in Sujood. Many of the du'as uh, of Rukua and Sujood are, are very uh, common and are, uh, are the same uh, to be used. The sixth obligation, Al-Wajib uh, Sadis, saying, Rabbiq firli, my Lord, forgive me between the two sajdas. So they, for radiallahu ta'ala, he said, أَنَّ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ كَانَ يَقُولُ بَيْنَ السَّجْدَتَيْنِ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to say between the two prostrations My Lord forgive me, my Lord forgive me Two times, another narration is three times And is another dua which is uh, better and more You get more reward inshallah when you say that رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَرْحَمْنِي وَعَافِنِي وَرْزُقْنِي وَجْبُرْنِي This is uh, very beautiful dua of the Prophet It's not long so try to memorize it and sometimes you do this, sometimes you do that, as we said, for all the du'as. Number eight and number nine, I'm sorry, number seven and number eight, the last obligation of salah are saying the first tashahud and sitting for the first tashahud. This is based upon the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu When one of you sits in the prayer, let him say tahiyat, all compliments, prayers, and pure words are so due, due, are due to Allah. And also upon the hadith, and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam قام في صلاة الظهر The Prophet Sallallahu stood for the Dhuhr prayer and he had a sitting to perform, meaning that he forgot to sit between the, uh, if, uh, after the second rakah, he forgot to sit. So the Prophet Sallallahu stood up for the third one. So when he completed his prayer, he performed two sajdas, two prostrations, meaning that, that he, he made it up with this to prostration. This is a, one of the proofs that the first tashahud is an obligation only. It's not a pillar because if an obligation is left out from the salah, the person prostrates to say that of forgetfulness. But if a pillar is left out from the salah, the prayer is considered invalid. Something, and the Sheikh concludes with that, something I will explain here because as I said, if this case happened with the Imam that the, the Imam forgets to sit in the, between the two tashahuds, uh, between the, the so then after the two rakah and the first tashahud and he is there is two situations if he is about to stand up is about to stand and somebody said subhanallah to correct him to remind him they're sitting and he's about to stand up and he understood that so he just started started for his uh, going in the third rakah then he's allowed for him to sit down it's allowed for him to sit down and he can continue, do this, do the tashahud, and then in the end, he can do the two sessions. But if the imam is already stood up more than half, he is on his way, he stood up and people are saying, subhanAllah, it is not allowed for the imam to go back to that. So even if the, the people are saying, subhanAllah, 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 let us learn the ruling. The imam knows it. If that, that he made a mistake, obviously in that, he forgot, but now it's like uh, that's why uh, it, it, it is it is allowed for the imam in this case to repeat the same words, meaning that you are so subhanallah, subhanallah. I know, I know what I'm doing, and he's not speaking, meaning that khalas, I know what I'm doing. If the people uh, they just keep saying subhanallah, 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 it's enough. So understand that. So if if he is in a, uh, if he comes down, some of the scholars even actually if he comes down knowing the ruling said his salah is invalid. Knowing the rule. Okay, so, some of ours know. Because if he didn't know, that's a different issue. So if the imam didn't know the ruling for that. So he comes. Not only knowing. Sometimes you feel like uh, intimidated. Or that he forgets. I mean, a lot of people maybe they don't know the ruling. And they say, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. Maybe he forgets and they just come down. And so, so he knows the ruling. But he, he comes down. It's like uh, yes. embarrassed or something. Not even only embarrassed. But it seems like, it's, uh, his, his mind is... Is, is gone in that moment. So uh, if the imam goes, it's almost 
coming up, as I said, he's not allowed to come back uh, for that uh, for that first tashahi. And obviously, in both cases, he does what he does the two sajda to sahu uh, or sajda to forgetfulness for that. Sajda forgetfulness have like different ruling, but just know uh, it's easy to memorize like this. If you add something, normally, if you add something to the salah, you do the sajda to sahu after the salam. So you give salam on the right side, salam alaikum warahmatullah. Then you do two sajda to sahu. And then you give salam again by not doing any more tashahud. If you add something, you add one rakah, you add uh, another tashahud, or you add something in salah. If you forget something, so you uh, decrease something, you took out something from the salah, you didn't say a dua or, or you did something less, you did you prayed three rakah instead of praying four, whatever, usually it is done what? Uh, before the salam. So even if you did three, for example, and you were reminded, then you're going to add up another rakah to complete it, then before the salam, you do the sajjah to sahu, and then you give salam normally. So just, this is generally speaking, there are some uh, specific cases, but normally the ruling, if you add something, you do the sajjah to sahu, two sajjah to sahu, after salam. If you uh, decrease something, take something out from the salat, then you do it before the salam, then you give salam after doing those. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, grant us beneficial knowledge and to forgive our sins. Allahumma ameen. La ilaha illa anta subhanak. Inna kunna minu barameen. Sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanak Allahumma hamdik. Ashadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru wa tubulayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.